dear students welcome to the lecture on fluxionality in eta 3 pi allyl complexes or compounds so in this lecture we will discuss about the fluxionality in eta 3 allyl compounds so as we know that we already know that the allyl group can acts as triheptyl that is eta 3 using its delocalized pi orbitals and monohepto eta 1 as sigma bonded to metal so this allyl group can act both as eta 3 or eta 1 in a metal complex so in uh, case of eta 1 complex the allyl group is attached to the metal center through one carbon atom while in trihepto form the uh, three carbon atoms of the allyl group they are attached to the metal center so this is a three electron donor this eta 3 is a three electron donor allyl group while eta 1 is a one electron donor allyl group so these are the different arrangements here you can see that this allylic group is attached to this metal that is molybdenum as eta 1 uh, and it is forming the sigma bond with the uh, molybdenum okay so this is the eta 1 form of allyl group here you can see that this uh, the all the three carbon atoms of the allyl group they are attached to the central atom so it is eta 3 binding uh, now this is uh, another example where, where you will find that uh, it, it is having again eta 3 type of allylic group forms so there are a number of examples where you will find the eta 1 allylic interaction uh, bonding or eta 3 allylic bonding so if you know the both type of bonding then you can easily understand about the uh, the fluxionality behavior of eta 3 allyl complexes so we have already studied about the fluxional behavior that means the dynamic equilibrium between the two structures the two structures they are uh, similar uh, in the um, in terms of bonding structure and energy so these uh, allylic complexes they also show fluxionality behavior uh, we have already studied in the uh, metal allylic complexes so actually if we see the eta 3 allylic uh, group then we will find that there are three kind of protons in the allylic compounds so if we say uh, this is an allylic compound this is the metal center so there are three kind of hydrogen atom uh, that can be termed as the three hydrogen atoms they are uh, chemically uh, uh, they have a different chemical environment so these uh, the hydrogen atoms shown by the green ink they are opposite to the metal side so uh, this is the metal side so these are present on the opposite side of the metal so i have shown it by nt hydrogen atoms so ha are the hydrogen atoms nt to the metal and this s means sin so these hydrogen atoms they are present on the same side of the metal so these are designated as sin hydrogen atoms and this hc is the hydrogen atom present on the central carbon atom so we have distinguished this these three kind of hydrogen atoms in eta 3 allylic complex and uh, it means that it uh, the allylic complex should show three peaks in its 1h nmr spectra so the spectra should be like this so this is the 1h nmr spectra of a molybdenum complex i will show you the structure and uh, this is at room temperature so at room temperature it should uh, show uh, the uh, because there are three kind of hydrogen atoms so uh, there should be three kind of uh, peaks in the 1h nmr of this complex okay so these are the hydrogen atoms uh, uh, present at sin position to the metal atom and these are the signals due to the hydrogen atoms that are anti to the metal atom and these this is the h 
uh, atom that is present on the central carbon atom so as you have seen i have again i uh, again uh, showing you the structure of the compound of which uh, this a1 h nmr is taken at low temperature so this is the 1 h nmr of this compound where you will find again that the h s is sent to this metal center these h a they are anti to this metal center while this h is present at the center carbon atom so you will find that this h will couple with this h so it will show doublet and this s will couple with this h so it should also show a doublet so there will be two doublets one for this h a and one doublet for this h s and there should be one quintet due to this hydrogen atom because it couple with these four hydrogen atoms so after coupling with these four hydrogen atoms it will show the quintet in the nmr spectra so again you can see that this doublet it is due to the hydrogen atoms that are sent to the metal center this doublet is due to the hydrogen atoms that are anti to the metal center and this quintet it has five peaks together so it, this quintet is due to the hydrogen atom coupling with this and this so this this is the one h n m r uh, spectra of a molybdenum compound at room temperature okay so this should be the scenario of this complex but at uh, some high temperature like that 40 degree centigrade temperature you will find that these two peaks will collapse if we have already studied in the uh, fluxional molecules uh, lecture where we will we have uh, studied that the two peaks they collapse as we increase the temperature and the position of the peak will be the weighted average of these two peaks so you can see the nmr spectra of this compound at 40 degree centigrade temperature where you will find that these two peaks they collapse to a uh, doublet and it means that these two hydrogen atoms they become equivalent so this equivalence may be due to the fluxionality of this allylic group so that this ha and hs this ha and hs they become equivalent actually they exchange at 40 degree centigrade temperature so fast that they cannot be recorded in the nmr spectra so we get the uh, peak the, the doublet at uh, a weighted average of these two uh, peaks so this is the nmr spectra at 40 degree centigrade we have already stated that as we increase the temperature the peaks will start collapsing due to their fluxional behavior so you can see uh, the enlarged uh, figure uh, photo of this 1h nmr at 40 degree centigrade temperature so here you will see that there is only uh, there are only two peaks that uh, is for hc and the other is for all the four hydrogen atoms and uh, the change in the peaks was due to the fluxional behavior of the allylic group so you can see this is an allylic group which is attached to the metal center through eta 1 or one carbon atom so there is a eta 1 interaction so this carbon atom is attached to the metal center so this is a eta 1 allyl complex okay so here you will see this bond this bond is free to rotate so due to the rotation of this bond you will find that there may be two kind of flipping so flipping of this group is which we can say the allyl flipping so this group may flip around this bond so this bond can rotate the molecule can rotate along this bond so that this group will flip or around uh, this flipping around this bond may 
causes the flipping of the metal center so this metal center can also flip the allylic group can also flip when we rotate or the the molecule is free to rotate along this single bond so if metal flipping takes place then you will find that this metal goes upside so here the metal goes upside and with this flipping the position of these two hydrogen will also change so that this hs2 will go here and this ha1 will come here so this is the metal flipping and due to this metal flipping you will find the flipping of or the exchange of ha1 and hs2 hydrogen atoms so that they become equal now here ha1 is here and here ha1 comes here so it means that there is exchange of these two groups very fast exchange so due to this fast exchange they are become indistinguishable so if they are indistinguishable so they don't show the peaks separate peaks in the nmr spectroscopy and they become equal so only one peak uh, is observed for ha1 and hs2 at atoms now if we rotate this uh, this group along this single bond then we will find such kind of changes in the molecule so that this bond will go upside so you will find that this hs1 position will change and it comes here and ha2 comes here so this is the flipping along this allylic group so we will find this structure and you will find that this structure and this structure they are equivalent structures you can see that metal atom uh, where the metal atom is there there are hs2 hc and ha2 here also you will find the metal atom hs2 hc and ha2 and at the opposite side to the metal center you will find ha1 and hs1 so at the opposite to the metal center you will find ha1 and hs1 so these two structures they are equivalent and you are you are uh, seeing that uh, at the position of ha1 and hs uh, ha1 and hs2 change the hair and due to flipping of allylic group the position of hs1 and ha2 will change so that all these atoms they become equivalent these four atoms they become equivalent so that uh, they give the weighted average of the uh, the uh, the peaks of the hydrogen atoms if the molecule will remain static so if the molecule will uh, be a static molecule then it will show the three peaks but if it is uh, showing the fluxional behavior then these hydrogen atoms they become equivalent due to fast exchange and we get only two peaks in the nmr spectroscopy it means it is showing the fluxional behavior so i will also show you about the flipping with the help of a model so i have taken a model for you and in this model you will find that this is the metal okay this is the metal so here this is the metal this is the position of the metal center here you can see that this is the double bond and here with this carbon atom the metal atom is joined okay and this is ha1 and this is ha1 of this model this is hs2 and this is hs2 this this hydrogen is hc this hydrogen is ha2 and this hydrogen is hs1 and this is the central carbon atom so this is the same model as uh, i have shown in this figure so you can see that this is the double bond these are the two hydrogen atoms this is nt because this is the uh, metal center so uh, the the hydrogen away from this i have written as nt so i have shown it by purple color uh, although the, all the hydrogen atoms they are similar and the the uh, hydrogen atoms that are present at the uh, towards the m i have written it as the sin and this is the hydrogen green color that is the hc carbon now i will flip this is the bond single bond along which it can rotate okay so it can rotate in two way so i am rotating it like this okay now you have you can see that now this metal atom it comes to the upside you can see the structure this metal comes to the upside 
the 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 other bond remains as such so this this part will remain as such only the change will be in this part so this metal is goes up and this purple colored uh, uh, that is h a1 this comes to this side and the h s2 goes to that side so this is h s2 so you can see that uh, in this way these two can exchange i have shown the uh, very slow rotation but this rotation takes place very fast like this very fast so this is so fast that these two hydrogen atoms they become indistinguishable so this is a kind of rotation in this allylic this is known as metal flipping now i will show you the allylic flipping so if we uh, this uh, fix this part as it was and you will see this is ha2 and this is sh1 dekhi this is hs1 and this is ha2 okay so if we rotate this group along this single bond then how we can rotate we can rotate like this you can see now now you can see see this molecule and this molecule so this part will remain as such you can see this part will remain as such because we are rotating this part okay so we are rotating this part so you can see that now you can see this is sc this is ha2 and this is hs1 okay previously it was like this okay. now we rotate this molecule like this so this is hc this is ha2 and this is hs1 so these kind of flipping they, they are this is this occur so fast so that these two hydrogen atoms cannot be distinguished likewise these two hydrogen atoms cannot distinguish these two hydrogen atoms they cannot distinguish so that these become chemically equal and these will show only one doublet in the nmr spectra at higher temperature so generally it occurs at higher temperature and both kind of flipping will takes place metal flipping as well as the allylic flipping so that the uh, the two the four hydrogen atoms they become equivalent now i will again show you the fluxional behavior of metal allylic complex so in this complex you will find that here i have uh, shown the metal flipping okay so along uh, this is the allylic eta 3 allylic complex first this allylic complex it becomes eta 1 allyl so the intermediate state is eta 1 allyl so through eta 1 allyl this eta 3 allyl will converts into again an eta allyl complex in which you will find that the uh, the position of the hydrogen atoms will changed and uh, they become equivalent due to exchange of these atoms so in this way you will find that this is eta 3 allyl and uh, during uh, this fluxional behavior this m will uh, goes to the here and this becomes eta 1 compound and after this metal flipping will takes place so along this bond this m will goes upside and these groups will also change to this and after this eta 1 allylic intermediate position the complex now again become eta 3 complex and in this eta 3 complex you will find the m will goes upside and uh, this uh, is chemically equivalent to this because all are h atoms but the position of h atoms actually changed so uh, where this m is there the hs2 is also there and h a2 is also there because their position has been changed so this molecule is the, the the it is chemically equivalent to this molecule they are actually equal so they are showing the uh, the two peaks in the nmr spectroscopy due to the metal flipping okay so in this structure you can see that 
the uh, the molecules they are having the same structure I, we have shown these h atoms for our convenience uh, with the uh, with the a and s and c but these hydrogen atoms they are actually equivalent they are same so they become equivalent they become equivalent due to the metal flipping okay so due to this exchange so this exchange becomes so fast that we cannot detect it in the nmr spectra so if we lower the temperature of the molecule then only we can uh, we can see uh, the the different kind of hydrogen atoms that are present in the allylic system this is the second kind kind of flipping that can occur in the allylic molecule again you can see that uh, eta 3 allyl complex this is the eta 3 allyl complex and in this complex the rotation of this part first it becomes the eta 1 allyl so this is the fluxional behavior of uh, allylic complexes where you will find that eta 3 will convert first into eta 1 and then this eta 1 then convert into eta 3 so when it converts into eta 1 where you can see that it is bonded to the one carbon center then rotation of this group along this single bond will takes place and due to this flipping of this allylic group you will see that this part will go upside so this hs1 will go here and ha1 go here and now you will see uh, the different uh, 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 arrangement of these atoms but because the hydrogen atoms they exchange and they are equivalent so now this and this they become equivalent and uh, this will again show two peaks in the nmr spectra now if we see the structure after metal flipping and after allylic flipping we will find these two structures they are similar this metal atom towards this metal atom site ha2 hs2 are there and here also towards the metal hs2 and ha2 are there and at the opposite site hs1 and ha1 are present here also uh, the hs1 and h1 are present so these are the equivalent structures either through metal flipping or through allylic flipping we will found the same structures in case of uh, metal allylic complexes so this is the fluxional behavior of allylic group so that uh, and that can be characterized through nmr spectroscopy uh, that is dynamic nmr spectroscopy only where we, we can find at higher temperature uh, the peaks will like this and at lower temperature because the rate of exchange will decrease so that they can be detected in the NMR spectra. So now we can conclude the lecture on fluxionality in eta 3 allylic complexes. So we have shown that uh, this eta, uh, this allylic complexes, uh, they may be, uh, they form complex eta 3 or eta 1 type. So these eta 3 allylic compounds they show the fluxional behavior which can be detected or characterized with the help of dynamic NMR spectroscopy where you will find that at lower temperature the uh, the ex rate of exchange will decrease so that we will obtain the uh, the peaks that are based on the different environment of the hydrogen atoms and at higher temperature the peaks will collapse and uh, due to the higher exchange the, the the change in the exchange in between the atoms is so fast that it cannot be detected with the help of NMR spectra and uh, the peaks will collapse and gives the weighted average of the position of the peaks in the uh, lower temperature spectra. The fluxional behavior of eta 3 allylic complexes is due to metal flipping and allylic flipping and due to this these flipping they are due to the free rotation around the single bond in eta 1 complex. So flexionality it takes place through the eta 1 intermediate one eta 3 allyl compound first convert into eta 1 compound and that eta 1 compound in that there was a free rotation around the single bond and after the rotation and exchange of uh, hydrogen atoms then it again converts into eta 3 allyl compounds so that uh, the the ad hydrogen atoms cannot be distinguished 
um, and they cannot be distinguished in the NMR spectra and uh, we will get the collapsed peak in the at the higher temperature due to fluxional behavior so this is all about the eta 3 allylic compounds fluxionality behavior in the next lecture we will discuss about the fluxionality of uh, the uh, uh, compounds having uh, the pi uh, ligands having sigma interaction so we will study about the uh, the fluxionality of uh, cyclopentadienyl ring